Hello and welcome to getting started with your new website. The first area we're going to look at is your My Account settings. Once you've logged in to your admin area, you'll see your home page. On your home page you have some great getting started information. For some of you this is the first time you've created a website and it can seem a little daunting, but with a little bit of trial and error and effort you're going to have a great looking website. Towards the top of that white area, you'll see a link that will show you your active website. You can check here to see changes that you make as you go along. It's great to see your website grow right before your eyes. Towards the right, you'll see the email address of the person who's logged in. We'll cover this a little bit more in the user accounts area. And then a log off button that you can use to log off of your account if you need to. On the left navigation panel, if you click on My Account and Account Information, this will take you to the Account Information Editing page. If you look up at the top right hand corner of the page there, you'll see that need help. That slides in on each area that you go to. You can click here to see helpful tips and videos on how to work on the page. The red text under the account information page name is a list of useful tips that we've put together for each page that will help remind you in case you happen to forget what it is you might need to edit or do on a particular page. Now to edit the account information page, click on the edit button and it'll open up a new window for you. This holds true for most areas that you go to within your site to edit. A new window will pop up and there could be one tab or several tabs for you to look at. Here there's five tabs. Fill out your company information and then your shipping information. And for your shipping information this is important to keep updated because this could be something we ship to you or if you happen to purchase something from an integrated vendor then this is the address they would use. Also fill in your contact information on the next tab over, your system settings regarding your computer and, and the system you're on, and then a business category. The business category is very helpful in case we happen to come out with any new products that would be useful for your particular business type. So fill those out and then when finished click save. Okay, next we're going to edit the users page. On the left navigation panel click users and this will take you to the account users page. Here you'll see a list of all users who have been approved to make edits and changes to your website. To add a new user, simply click on the Add New button, and in the window that pops up, fill out the requested information. On the second tab over is User Permissions. This is very helpful because you'll be able to take each user and set separate permissions for each one, whether you want them to be able to read, write, or delete the pages that they're working on. When finished, click Save. From the account user's main page, you can also change information for any user that you need to. Simply click on their email link, go to the user's information page, make any changes you need to, and click Save. Now back over to the left navigation panel, let's click on Activity Log. This is where you'll be able to see what changes were made to your account, when and by whom. Up above you'll see there's search boxes that you can fill in to be able to search for specific times, users, or actions. Again back to the left panel, let's click on Invoices. This is where you'll see a list of invoices that go between us and you. If you ever have a question about a specific invoice, simply call customer service to discuss it. The paragraph above here has some interesting information. You might give it a quick read when you have a minute. And under Billing Statements, depending on the type of account you have, you may or may not see a list of billing statements here. Okay, now let's get ready to really have some fun. On the left navigation panel, Click Website Editor and Website Layouts. This will take you to the Website Layouts default screen. Click on the words Default Layout. This is what you'll see the very first time you go into your website. Click on the words Site Layout tab. This will take you to the list of different theme templates that we have. And under each one you'll see the list of different colors that each one of those comes in. We have a total of about 260 different combinations of template themes and color schemes that go along with them. You can change between these as often as you like to. So try a couple different ones on for size and see how they feel and how they fit with your look. Once you find one that you like, when you click on it, you'll have a check mark next to it and that's the one that will be active on your site. The next tap over is for pages. You'll see there's three default pages that are built in with your system when it's created. We'll show you how to make new pages in just a few minutes. You can uncheck these pages and they'll not show in your navigation bar on your active website. Let's say you have a spring special that you only want to show for two months of the year. Simply uncheck it when you don't want it shown and have a check mark when you do. The next tab over is your slider. Click on that. Click on Browse. 
Navigate to the folder where your images are for your homepage slideshow, select them, and click open. They're uploaded instantly. Want to change them out? Quick and easy. Simply hit the red X in the corner of the image, and they're deleted. Click Browse again, navigate to your new images, select them, and click Open. It's that quick and easy to change out your slider images. The next tab over is for music. If you want royalty-free music on your site, we provide that as well. Use the drop-down arrow to select the style of music you like, and then simply put a check mark and a sort order number on the tracks you would like to use. All right, the next tab over is your social media tab. You're going to create your social media on a different area of the website editor, and we'll show you that in just a couple of minutes. Once you go in and create them, you'll come back here to turn them on. The reason we made it this way is, for some reason, if your social media was ever hacked into and you didn't want it active on your website, you can uncheck that box, and it won't show up on your website. Next is your header area. You can upload an image or create text. If you want to upload an image, click Browse, navigate to your area, and apply. Or click the Edit Text button, type in your text, and click Apply. You'll have to enter your header area twice, once for desktop computers and once for mobile devices. Also for your footer, you'll need to enter footer information for desktop computers and also for mobile devices as well. We default to having basic copyright text in there for you when your site is created, but you can change it to anything you would like to. Once done, just click the Apply, then click Save. This takes you back to the main page for your website layouts. Now there's another really exciting feature that we wanted to share with you real quick. This system lets you add seasonal themes, holiday themes, different look and feels to your website. You've got your default layout that's active all the time, but you can add a second theme. Let's call this one Spring, so you type in the name. And then you get to choose the dates that you want it to automatically be displayed from. So we're going to choose March 15th, 2017, that we want this to be our active layout. And then we'll have this end on April 30th, 2017. This theme will automatically show up and disappear based on those dates. You can fill it out with a complete new layout and look, new sliders, new pages, whatever changes you'd like to make and it'll automatically appear and go back to your default layout on the date you specified. And remember you can create as many of these new layouts as you choose to and you'll see a list here in your website layouts default screen. Get creative, have fun. I think you'll really enjoy it. Next we're going to get started in your website pages. On the left navigation panel click website editor and website pages. This will take you to your website pages editing area. Here you'll see a list of all of your pages that have been created on your website under the list of all pages. Now to add a new page, click on the add new button and you'll give your page a name. It's going to be filled in three times as you type the first one. The page name is what shows up in your list of pages under all pages. The menu name is what shows up in your navigation bar on your website and the vanity name is what shows up in the URL bar up in your browser. You can give your page a sort order as to how you want them to show on your navigation bar of your website. Next you can choose a page layout. We have several different started in here for you. This is kind of just a basic starting point because we'll show you in just a few minutes how you can edit that layout. Also you want to add for each page your SEO. You can do this later after you have your page content if that's easier. But here you'll give your SEO a title, type in some keywords. Keywords are what people might type into a search engine bar to find your website. Maybe San Diego Portrait Photographer or Wedding Photography, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And then a short little description and click Save. Once you're finished editing your page, you can come back and click on the words to bring up the edit page window and make any necessary changes to the page name, to your SEO, any general changes you need to make. Or you can even delete the page. Click on the delete icon and it's gone from your list. If you accidentally delete a page, you can just click on the include deleted check mark and it will bring that back and you can click on undelete. Makes it easy to save something in case you make a mistake. Now we're going to start editing the page itself. 
When we created the page, we chose the single column layout just to get started. So as we bring up the page, you'll see an editing toolbar above our column there. You can click here to edit the text or highlight it, whichever is easier for you, and click your page title. We're going to call this About Us. You can then highlight the text to go up to your editing bar. Choose a new font size, a new font style, even a new font color if you choose to. Next we're going to add some new columns. If you go to the third icon in, we call that our snippets. And this is where you can add columns, separate columns, merge columns, split columns, delete columns. We're going to choose adding a double column in the row below where our cursor was. Now we're going to add a new image here in this left window. Click up into your toolbar and you can see each one tells you what it is as you, ho as you hover over it. We're going to choose the insert change image icon and navigate to the folder where our image is. Double click it and it's inserted. It's very important when you upload an image into a column that you don't click in it and change the size of the image while it's in the window. This will remove its responsiveness so that it doesn't appear appropriately on different devices. Instead, if you want it to be a particular size, let's say you're putting an image into this full width column. If you upload an image in there, it will go full width if your image is that size. Otherwise, if you would like to have maybe a smaller image in a full width column and wrap your text around it, you could resize your photo to say 300, 400, whatever, how many pixels you'd like it to be, and then upload it. Let's upload a video into this next column. Put your cursor where you'd like it, click on the insert video icon, and then embed a link to wherever you have that video posted, whether it's on YouTube or Vimeo. You can check the box here if you want it to autoplay when you've inserted it and there you see it uploads and then embeds your video right into your website page. Now let's go in and add columns underneath where we just were. Let's go back to the snippets, go to insert row below, and click apply. All right, so we've got one full column there, but let's say we want to divide that. Go back up to your snippets, and let's choose split columns to two columns. There we go. You can even go into the right side where you just split it and split it again. So now you've got two smaller columns. If you do something that you don't like, as far as the columns are concerned, go back up into the snippets and you can delete the current selection. All right, so let's add some content here. Uh, it's good to put some good SEO rich content on your page. Click your cursor where you'd like your content to be and type it in. If I could spell, I can never spell right when people are watching. Uh, let's say on the right side we want to insert a file. It's a great feature we have. Let's say you have a what to wear guide that's a PDF file that you'd like your customers to be able to download. Simply put your cursor there, click on the insert file icon, navigate to where your file is located, and double click it, and it's uploaded. Now once the file has uploaded, you can highlight that text, which is a link, click on it, and then click on the edit up in the bar. This way you can take that link text and change it to whatever you'd like it to say. Simply make your changes in that text box there and it's good to go. Down below you'll see a little checkbox where you can have it open into a new page if you'd like. Once you've chosen all your changes there, click edit. From here you can just continue to edit your page. Remember you can't break this system. You might think you do and if you think you do and you can't delete the page or fix what you've done wrong, give us a call and we'll help you out. But have fun and create some great pages. Okay, next we're going to create some portfolios. This is where you want to do your show and tell to your customers. This is different from event photos that you're posting online to sell. In the website editor, click on portfolios. And then to add a new portfolio, just click on the add new button. First, you're going to give your portfolio a name whether it's your family portraits, high school seniors, baby portraits, and then give it a quick little description if you choose to. You don't have to put this in, this is optional, but I'll show you where this is going to show up in just a few minutes when we look at the portfolio we've just created. You can also give your portfolio a sort order. Next you want to give your portfolio a thumbnail image. Click the Browse button, navigate to where you find your image, and remember you can position that within that tab. Now, if you do like music on your portfolios, you can add specific music to each portfolio. 
If you don't turn on the music for your entire website, you can turn it on here instead. A cool feature we have with our portfolio music is that it can actually time the slideshow to the music. Once done, click Save. Now, next we're going to upload images. Highlight the family portraits portfolio that you just created. Click Browse. Navigate to the folder where you have your images. Select the images and click Open. They upload pretty quickly. And once they're uploaded, we'll show you how to edit those images. To edit these images that you just uploaded, click on the Images Word, and it'll bring up a new window showing you the images that you uploaded. There's a blue rotate arrow in the corner, and you can also click the red arrow in the upper corner if you want to delete images. Now click on your active website link towards the upper edge of your screen, and then click on Portfolio, and you can see that portfolio that we just created. Here's that little line of text I was showing you about that's optional as a description, so you can have it there or not. Now remember, you can have as many portfolios here as you like. And that sort order comes in very handy that I showed you when you're creating the portfolio. Click on the portfolio thumbnail and it'll bring up the window to show you the images. We've got this set to default to a collage view. I'll talk about this in the settings when we get there. Also in the settings, you have the option to turn on or off the eligibility of your viewers to choose the way that they view the thumbnails. The top one gives you the full screen view that your viewer can arrow through to see the images. The second option is the collage view. And then the third option is a slideshow view. Now let's add some social media. On the website editor in the left navigation panel, click on social media. To add new social media, click on the add new button. In the drop-down arrow, choose the social media that you'd like and put in the URL of your personal social media page. For example, we're just using Twitter.com, but yours would have the slash with your handle on it. You can use as many as we have available. Just keep adding until you have as many as you'd like to use and click Save. Once you have those done, go back to your website layouts view, click on your default layout, and click on the social media tab. Turn those new ones on that you just created. In the pages area where we added the About Us page, here's that new page we added. It defaults to on, the social media is default to off. So just keep that in mind as you're creating those. All right, now let's take a look at settings. Under the left navigation panel, click on Website Editor and Settings. Here is several general settings for your website that you should go through. Click the Edit button. Now, the first thing that you'll want to look at is when you do create a contact form, this is where you want to put the email addresses of the people who will receive that email. We'll go into creating a contact form in another video because it's a little bit more in depth. Now, if you have a Google, Google Captcha key, here's where you want to put that in. If you don't know what that is, you can click here to get it. It's that little key that goes onto a contact form that keeps robots from sending you spam mail. Google Analytics is another great tool to have. It helps you track all sorts of activity on your website, what browsers are being used, what country people are watching your site from. So you can click on What's This and it'll show you an example of what a Google Analytics ID looks like and tell you how to get it. Next is the slide transition speed for the slideshows. I usually keep these at 3 to 4, but you can play around to see what works best for you. Next is the right click protection checkbox. This protects the images on your website to keep them from being downloaded by a right click. And then we have your custom colors. If you have a custom logo color that you want to put in or a text color you want to use, simply put that in here with the pound sign, the six digit hex code separated by commas. Then click over to the music tab and you can choose how loud you would like your music to play on your website if you use it. Now the portfolio settings are, this is what I was talking to you about on the portfolio view. You can select between a collage, full screen, or the portfolio view. I typically like to use a collage view just because it appears very nicely to the viewer. Here's the checkbox where you can choose to allow your visitors to have the choice of the viewing options. And then you can also choose what color screen you'd like to have behind your portfolio. So make those changes and then click Save. 
Well, this wraps up today's website walkthrough. We want to thank you for taking the time to spend with us today, and we hope we've given you enough tools to get started and really to have some fun. Thanks for viewing and have a great day.